Premier Li Qiang explains China's policies as Four Hour Forum opens. Multiple vehicles in deadly accident on Lantau Island. Beijing condemns Tsai Ing-wen's transit visit to the U.S. Good evening and welcome to TVB News. The Bo Ao Forum for Asia Annual Conference 2023 officially opened today. In his keynote speech, Premier Li Qiang explained China's positions on major international and domestic issues. He also said China will stay committed to reform, opening up and innovation-driven development, no matter how the world situation may evolve. Timothy Lee reports. At the opening plenary of the Boao Forum for Asia Annual Conference this morning, Premier Li Qiang delivered a keynote speech that explained China's major policies to the world. He said in the past 10 years, China has pushed forward its foreign policy of a community with a shared future for mankind as part of Beijing's developmental framework to cooperate with nations. We need to work together to build an anchor for world peace a source of impetus for global growth and a new pace setter for international cooperation to add certainty to world peace and development and shape a better future for humanity. Lee said for substantial development to be realized in Asia, the continent must do all it can to prevent internal chaos and wars, adding that Beijing opposes unilateral sanctions and the new Cold War mindset that some countries have adopted. Li also noted the Chinese economy showed an encouraging momentum in the first two months of this year, and the situation will be even better in March. He insisted Beijing will never pursue modernization through war or colonization, and China will bring progress to its 1.4 billion-plus population to become a modern society through peaceful development. Some 2,000 political and other leaders from 50 countries or regions took part in the Boao Forum. This is the first time the event was held physically since the COVID pandemic. Timothy Lee, TVB News. The Boao Forum was attended by many world leaders and heads of global institutions. They spoke on important issues spanning geopolitical competition, Sino-U.S. relations and the Belt and Road Initiative during the event. Dan Rell tells us more. Speaking at the Boal Forum for Asia, International Monetary Fund Managing Director Kristalina Gurgieva called for global cooperation and solidarity in a time of high uncertainty and geopolitical tensions. We expect 2023 to be another difficult year with global growth falling below 3% as the effects of the war in Ukraine and monetary tightening continue to take hold. We have learned that supply chains must be made more secure and more resilient. Addressing these concerns, as we heard from Premier Li Chang, it requires a pragmatic approach, working together where it matters most. Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim also called for unfettered competition to give way to collaboration. He highlighted the importance of China's Belt and Road Initiative in promoting solidarity and cooperation in Asia. The rivalry to be ahead in this can take either a productive or destructive turn. On the one hand, we need to recognize that countries will always seek to protect their intellectual property rights and try to stay ahead on the competition. On the other hand, we need to establish certain guardrails so that the competition does not lead to bifurcation in the technological world, one that will raise costs and impede progress. Translating lofty ideas into practical reality, solidarity and cooperation is best exemplified in the realization of the Belt and Road Initiative. Meanwhile, Singaporean Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong warned about grievous consequences brought by tensions between China and the US and called on the two countries to stabilize their bilateral relations. We hope that China and the United States will succeed in stabilizing their relationship and establish sufficient mutual trust and respect
to cooperate in areas where their interests are aligned. Daniel TVB News. Before attending the Boao Forum, Premier Li Chiang met with Chief Executive John Lee. The pair shook hands as they took a group photograph together with other Hong Kong delegates such as Hong Kong Stock Exchange Chairman Laura Cha and Chinese General Chamber of Commerce Chairman Jonathan Choi. The chief executive then shared the group photo with the premier on his social media. The government estimated that around 9 million people will cross the Hong Kong mainland border during Qingming Festival and Easter holiday in the first two weeks of April. Authorities expect the Lower Wu Control Point to be the busiest of all border crossing points, with around 2.2 million people passing through the premises in the first 10 days of next month. Meanwhile, 140,000 people are estimated to pass through the Lok Ma Chow Control Point and the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge on a daily basis during the same period. Some travel agencies reported that even though ticket prices remain high for flights, Many people are still enthusiastic about flying during the holidays. There was a deadly traffic accident on Lantau Island early this morning. Two trucks collided on the North Lantau Highway before a taxi rammed into the rear of one of the vehicles. The taxi then erupted in flames with the driver still trapped inside. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Timothy Lee tells us more. Footage provided by a witness shows a taxi slamming into the back of one of the trucks before catching on fire. Medical personnel could be seen helping the wounded onto the ambulance. Most of the taxi was destroyed by the flames. Its 40-year-old driver was removed from the vehicle by fire services and was pronounced dead on site after suffering fatal burns. Firefighters also attempted to hose down the trucks that sustained the heat of the blaze. Witnesses said the incident occurred at around 4 in the morning on the North Lantau Highway near Tungchung City Gate Mall, where two trucks smashed into one another. One of the trucks stopped on the highway's breakdown lane, while the other stopped between the mid lane and fast lane. Moments later, a taxi rammed into a truck's rear. This witness noted that a minute after the crash, he heard a loud bang before fire broke out. He added the flames gradually expanded to the front of the truck before he heard another explosion. Sources said while the truck station on the breakdown lane flashed its hazard lights, the truck hit by the taxi did not. Police are now investigating the speed of the vehicles at the time as well as the mental state of the drivers. The affected section of North Lantau Highway leading to the airport was closed until 10 a.m. and then was gradually reopened. Timothy Lee, TVB News. A fire broke out in a typo flat this morning, killing one and injuring seven. Sources said it was caused by a short circuit. Fire services arrived at the Tung Sao Square unit at around 3 a.m. and found a 35-year-old man unconscious. He was admitted to hospital but died in care. It is believed he tried to put the fire out himself after telling his girlfriend to flee the apartment. Residents in two neighboring flats were also affected by the flames. Firefighters took more than half an hour to put out the blaze. Starting tomorrow, residents can register birth and death certificates online. Those who are looking to replace their Hong Kong ID cards can do so over the Easter and tomb-sweeping holidays. Veronica Lin reports. In the past, when someone was born or passed away, family members had to go to the registry to get a certificate. With the new Births and Deaths Registration Ordinance 2023 coming into effect on March 31st, the Immigration Department announced that online registration services will be introduced. In the past, dozens of parents in Hong Kong would fail to register their newborns before their first birthday. However, that may change with the introduction of e-services, says Principal Immigration Officer of Documents, Yong Suk Yi. As we introduce the online registration, we believe that it's more convenient for the parents to do the registration. Even when they are um, uh, busy at home, they could still uh, cater for the online registration. That is our hope in the, uh, for the service. For deaths from natural causes, the deadline for registration will be extended to 14 days from the original 24 hours. However, these will not apply to deaths from unnatural causes such as blunt force trauma, poisoning and so on. Meanwhile, for those who have yet to replace their old Hong Kong ID cards, Yang Pei Kar, the principal immigration officer for registration of persons, says there's no need to rush back to Hong Kong to do so, as there is no deadline for the replacement. 
For the first time ever, Hong Kong's ID card office will be open during public holidays. Residents can register to replace their old Hong Kong ID cards during Easter and Tun Sui Fee holidays starting on April 3rd. Veronica Lin, TVB News. Beijing has criticized the U.S. for arranging Taiwanese leader Tsai Ing-wen's visit. This came as Tsai arrived in New York and was scheduled to spend Thursday in the city. Jason Tan has more. Taiwan leader Tsai Ing-wen arrived in New York for a U.S. stopover. She was greeted by some supporters, but there were also people opposing her visit. More than 100 organizations, including the American Chinese Association, posted a statement in newspapers protesting against China's collusion with the U.S. But China has vowed not to let external pressure prevent the island from engaging with the world. Her remarks came after Beijing threatened retaliation if she meets U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. China is en route to Guatemala and Belize, two of the few countries that recognize Taiwan diplomatically. She will stay in New York until Saturday and will visit Los Angeles on her return from Central America. The White House insists Chai's transit is consistent with Washington's long-standing One China policy, which remains unchanged. Beijing has repeatedly warned U.S. officials not to meet Chai. Morning, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson today said the U.S. disregards China's solemn complaints and repeated warnings by arranging the so-called transit for China to go to the U.S. And Beijing strongly protests and condemns that. Over the weekend, Honduras severed its ties with Taipei in favor of Beijing. And the president is planning to visit China. Jason Tan, TVB News. Former Taiwan leader Ma Ying-jeou continued his mainland trip today in Wuhan, Hubei province. Ma is expected to meet with the director of Beijing's Taiwan Affairs office this evening. This morning, Ma visited the Wuhan Revolutionary Museum, which commemorates the Xinhai Revolution that overthrew the Qing dynasty and established a republic in China more than a century ago. Ma said he idolized Dr. Sun Yat-sen, who led that revolution and spoke at a podium like Dr. Swin once did. He then went to the Wuhan Archives Bureau that showcased an exhibition on the coronavirus. Ma said he was impressed by how authorities handled the pandemic. During the afternoon, he accompanied 30 students from Taiwan to Wuhan University. Still to come on tonight's news, robots in operation to help prevent flooding in the city. The Pope is sick, but he's not infected with COVID. Britain's King Charles visits Germany to improve ties. Welcome back to TVB News. With the rainy season fast approaching, the drainage department said it has already tackled most of the flooding black spots in the city. Authorities are also preventing floods with the help of robots. As unpredictable as the weather can be, rainstorms, hail and minor flooding swept the city last Saturday. But Hong Kong may just have to brace itself for similar scenes as the rainy season is fast approaching. The drainage department said today most of the 127 flooding black spots in the city have been tackled. Four black spots have not been fully tackled, and that includes one in Pok Fu Lam and one in Tim Sha Chu, where construction work is already underway. Alice Pang, director of drainage services, said remote cameras have been set up in different areas to monitor water levels or drain lines that are easily clogged. The department stressed with the lifting of COVID restrictions, it's been hosting more tours for primary and secondary students to learn more about its projects. One of the more high-tech tools in the department's flood-fighting arsenal are these robots. For example, this river desilting robot that collects silt by suction, like a vacuum cleaner. There are six similar robots in operation. Their effectiveness will be sporadically reviewed to assess whether new technology will be needed. Meanwhile, the department is also working on a $1.34 billion project which incorporates its flood prevention work with conservation and connecting the public. That includes this revitalization project on Choping River in Quintong. The project will include features such as an engineered wetland as well as aesthetically appealing adjoining walkways with the aim being to create public leisure spaces centered on the river. The work began in July 2020 and is expected to be completed next year. 
overseas at a virtual summit on democracy organized by the White House, U.S. President Joe Biden announced new funding to bolster democracies around the world. However, dozens of countries were holding back on a summit declaration laying out commitments to democratic principles. Biden announced a planned 690 million U.S. dollars in funding to help fight corruption, support free and fair elections, and advance technologies that support democratic Hello, governments. <clears throat> Although <clears throat> leaders of 120 <throat> nations were invited, a summit declaration which included backing to basic tenets of democracy like free and fair elections and called out Russia for its invasion of Ukraine was initially endorsed by only 73 countries. Just days before the start of Holy Week, observances, Pope Francis is in hospital. The Vatican said the 86-year-old leader of the Roman Catholic Church has a respiratory infection, but he's not infected with COVID. This report from NBC News. This morning at his weekly general audience, Pope Francis appeared to be in good form and voice. Perhaps the only hint of trouble reports he grimaced getting in and out of the Pope mobile. That didn't stop Francis from the part of his job he clearly enjoys. But later he was taken to Gemelli Hospital for what the Vatican says is a respiratory infection that caused the 86 year old pontiff breathing difficulties in recent days. The Vatican was quick to say this is not COVID. NBC's Claudio Lavanga is in Vatican City. The day started as every Wednesday at the Vatican with the Pope presiding over the general audience in St. Peter's Square looking perfectly fine. So we were surprised when only a couple of hours later the Vatican said he was taken to the hospital for some pre-scheduled medical tests. But then as rumors began to build, at the end of the day the Vatican said that he, in fact he has a respiratory infection. As a young man, Francis had part of one lung removed while he was a seminarian in Argentina suffering from pneumonia. Knee pain has forced him to use a wheelchair in the past year, and he underwent colon surgery in 2021 when he was hospitalized for 10 days. Today, while meeting with Argentina's president, President Joe Biden told reporters he had just heard about the Pope's health issues. The president, a lifelong Catholic who keeps a picture of Francis in the Oval Office, told reporters he was concerned about the man he calls a dear friend. Britain's King Charles is on a state visit to Germany, where he is hoping to strengthen ties following the UK's withdrawal from the European Union. The British royal family are popular in Germany, and he was greeted by hundreds of well wishes in Berlin. David Garrett reports. The UK national anthem played at the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin. King Charles on his first state visit as monarch following the death of his mother, Queen Elizabeth, in September. The British head of state greeted by the German president, Frank Walter Steinmeier. Charles, now 74, was bestowed with a military honour. Then the new monarch, joined by his wife, Camilla, the Queen Consort, met with Berliners who had waited patiently to see and speak with him. Later it was dinner time, a banquet fit for a king. Held at Schloss Bellevue, the king is trying to mend divisions following Brexit. The German president addressed the matter head on. Schlagen wir ein neues Kapitel auf. In March 2017, the United Kingdom began its exit from the EU, he said. Exactly six years later, we are turning over a new leaf. We look ahead to change conditions, but still together. Former German Chancellor Angela Merkel listened as the British monarch spoke in fluent German. Meine Frau und sich sind tief gerührt. The king then switched to English. It was, Mr. President, a friendship which mattered greatly to my mother, the late queen, who cared deeply about the bond between our two countries. Germany. Charles spoke on environmental issues and shared values. And, of course, we stand side by side in protecting and advancing our shared democratic values. This is epitomized so clearly today as we stand together with Ukraine in defense of freedom and sovereignty in the face of unprovoked aggression. The King's speech finishes with a toast. Germany became his first overseas destination when France postponed a visit because of protests over pension reform. David Garrett, TVB News. 
At least 30 people are dead after a fire on a passenger ferry traveling between islands in the Philippines. This Coast Guard footage shows the Lady Mary Joy 3 on fire. The craft carrying more than 250 people was traveling overnight from Zamboanga to the town of Jolo in Sulu. Investigations continue, but indications suggest the blaze began in the air conditioning system. Rescue teams tackled the fire, but some people drowned at sea after jumping off the burning boat. And that's the news. Thanks for watching.